with streets and houses, rainbow climbing high. Everyone can see it smiling over the sky. Paint the whole world with a rainbow. Hello, children. Today we're talking about gains. Do you like getting shredded? What about you, Bungle? Oh, Jeffrey, I do love pumping iron. Arnold Schwarzenegger was right. It's like sex. Jeffrey, I'm coming every day. <laughs> I know you are, Bungle. I keep seeing that awful little lipstick poking out, and I saw George's too. It but it's tiny. Fuck off, Zippy, you awful cunt. Yes, fuck off, Zippy. You're only that hedge because you've been juicing with roids, you zip-faced child molester. Everybody calm down. We just have to teach the children about getting hench while listening to Shard Select. It's a podcast about thick boys. Ooh, I'm a thick bear, Jeffrey. <laughs> You're a thick twat. Ooh, that's it, Zippy. I'm going to savage your dick off, grizzly style. You know what, children? Fuck this shit. Ooh. Ah, he's got the skin, he's got the skin. Ah, ah, you dick. Welcome to Shark Select. Hello everybody, and welcome to another excellent episode of Shark Select. It is excellent, probably not, but it's all good. I am your host, Winstolf, and I am joined by the, my favourite homunculus, G. Hello. Ooh, very homunculi. I'm also joined by a mythical creature that only rises in the night time, known as Ryan. Hello. Welcome to Shark Select, everyone. Thanks for coming back. It's nice to see you. Last week we did Halloween. We didn't scare you all the way with all these ghosty ghoulies. Ooh. Yeah. I suppose I could say it's like the podcast equivalent of being bummed by a ghost. I'll say that for next Halloween. Pretend you didn't hear that, audience. Uh, so let's start off, as we always do, by getting the boring stuff out of the way first. It's the promotionals where you can find the Shark Select on the internet and interact with us. Because you have to interact with us. We, we, we're loving the interaction at the moment for our listeners. And if Stu doesn't get enough what people responses, he does get very upset. Don't you, Stu? Yeah, very upset. Yeah, he gets very fucking angry. I've heard him screaming. This morning, before we recorded, he sat and breathed down the microphone for five whole minutes in a rage. Yeah, he didn't even say anything. He just must have been seething. He was like... <sighs> down the, the mic. Yeah, it's like on um, Knights of the Republic, where you have to seethe to raise your uh, force powers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stand there, seething. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so cross! And you can feel your power. <laughs> <don't> you know? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I'm miffed. All right, anyway, so... Where can you find Shark Select on the internet? Well, first of all, we're on Twitter. It's at Shark Select Pod. It's, of course, run by Stu, which is why it's full of dank memes. Are they still called dank memes? Thick memes. We should make them our own. We should. If Stu curates all the thick pictures and puts them online, they could be thick memes. Mm. By the way, that thick mountain lion you showed me a picture of the other day, that was something. It was thick, wasn't it? It was a fucking square with a line. Absolute line unit. On it. it was. It was fucking... Ugh, maximum gains on that yeah, bad boy. Must be watching Rainbow. Yeah, Rainbow, the mythical uh, lost episode of Rainbow. Mm. Maybe you'll hear it one day, audience. Who knows? Instagram, Shark Select Pod. Uh, we don't do so much on there at the moment, do we, Stu? No, because it's rubbish. Well, fucking called you out, Instagram. Yeah. What's that? Sorry, Instagram. We can't hear you, fucking pussies. Yeah, that's right. So we're on Insta the- cunt. Insta fucking shit. <laughs> shit. The gram. I don't know. Leave it with me. I'll come up with something really scathing. We're on YouTube, shout underscore select. And we've also got a second channel, which is the highlights channel. People love the highlights because it's super, like people's busy lifestyles. They have to take time out from masturbating and looking at memes. So it's like five minute clips. Unless they masturbate two hour voices. In which case, we are flattered. Whenever they hear Ryan's voice, they're like, Ugh! Oh, you're ASMR. Which I'm going to record an hour of, don't forget. I forget what the conditions were that for that one. get just number one on <laughs> Podchaser. That was like number one on Podchaser. Get us there, and I will record an hour of ASMR and include Stu seething, breathing, and Ryan's monotone voice in there. Yeah, it's going to be fucking powerful. We're also on Podchaser, which we've just mentioned. It's where the all the podcasts are f- put together in a master list of podcasts. If you rate us up to number one in there, 
ahead of our friendly rivals, Grief Burrito, then we'll be ever in your favour and we'll probably kiss you on the bum bum. But never mind ASMR, I'll come round your house and read to you until you fall asleep. You'll literally read you a story in bed. Yeah. Top 100 now, aren't we? Top 100 That's pretty good. Out of all podcasts as well, not just... Like one category, that's every podcast with top 100. In your fucking face, Seth Rogen. Doing better. Is it Seth Rogen or is it another Rogen? Either way, we're doing better than him. Joe Rogen, isn't it? Yeah. It's another Joe Rogen, yeah. Who's he? Never heard of him. So I don't even know his name. We're that far, we're that far above him. It's like you're asking me to know a, an insect's name in my garden. I don't, because they are beneath me. <laughs> um, also, iTunes. Go on there, give us a five star review, say something nice about us. It really helps. I don't know how, but iTunes still is like the master, isn't it? If you say nice things on iTunes, everyone knows about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apple whispers in pe- right the right people's ears like, hey, come here, come here, come closer. There you go. Shout select. Go fucking listen to them. They make me hard. That's what they're like. I've got that from a reliable source. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, all right. In those cases, without any further ado, it's time for our first <laughs> jingle, leading us into our first section of the podcast. Here we go. You ready? If you do a big poo, it gets covered in flies. If you listen to Shot Select, you get Ryan's surprise. Did you like yeah, that? Yeah, right. so we've got some good ones this time for a change, because some of the AI scripts have been getting weaker, so instead... Just, just limbering up a bit. I've um, <sighs> scoured the internet and found three very good cringy stories. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, it's just cringing. Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> Cringe so hard, but dick goes inside me. Yeah, let's do it. very good <laughs> cringy stories here. These are fucking... These are great. So, here we go. Number one. The new office blunder. Ooh! Ooh. So, I just started a new job, and I was trying to bond with my colleagues in the kitchen whilst on a tea break. So far, so good. That is, until I needed the milk for my brew. Rather than politely asking if I could borrow it, for the reasons still unknown to myself, I blurted out, Milk me! (laughs) (laughs) And and followed it with a nod in the direction of the milk, only to make the situation creepier and more awkward. (laughs) Milk me! (laughs) It's like like you're the new person in the office as well. (laughs) Milk me! I didn't pass my probation. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just think that's a pretty cringy story, isn't it? That was fucking beautiful. That's a good start, that. We've already had a good lol out of it. And yep. What else you got for us? So I've got... <clears throat> this is the title. I accidentally just flipped off my elderly woman co-worker instead of giving her a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stu's been, Stu's been there before. <laughs> <laughs> So, here we go. So, we work in a factory and she works on the machine next to mine. Uh, She asked me to watch her machine while she runs to the bathroom. When she got back, she looked over and she gave me an OK sign. Sort of like the thumb and the index finger. Like a circle thumb and the index finger with like three antennas. Yeah, yeah. With your fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kind of saying, thanks, I'm back. I meant to give her a thumbs up, but I had my hand in the normal proper thumbs up position. But for some reason, I decided to stick my middle finger out too. (laughs) That's felt like a weird gun. <laughs> so I give her a, side, a sideways flip off. She just looked at me and did that thing where you tuck your chin in and look at the top of your eyes like, excuse me? I wanted to immediately die and leave and call off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Coming back from the bathroom, just flipping her off. Say, so Stu's actually been there. You know, instead of waving bye to some people, once he just stuck his fingers up at him. Oh, at yeah. <laughs> then we had to make an yeah, escape like GTA. <laughs> He said, see you later, though, as well. He did, see you later, sticking his fingers See you later, sticking his fingers. They dived in the car going, drive, 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 drive. like, what have you done? So I have to stuck my fingers up at him. I mean, they were asking for it. But. It's not so much what I said. It's more, no, more no, what I said but than we won't, what I did. We won't go into what you said, though, because it was pretty horrible. <laughs> Say they were a pain in the ass, which was entirely deserved, but <laughs> it's still horrible. Right. Any more for the fi- yeah, final story. So this one is, again, another cringy story. So it's about a um, landlord about showing people around the house that he's selling, even though it's still tenanted by people renting it. This is going to be fun And you give them, obviously you give them a warning that I'm coming around to show people around this house, so you need to vacate. So I'm having a tour of the of a house, and mind you, I'd given the tenant notice beforehand and also announced my presence loudly when I entered when we go into the bedroom. All eyes immediately drawn to a person-sized lump under the covers of the bed. I say, uh, Joe, are you here? And the guy pops up from under the covers and goes, oh, hey. 
This is obviously extremely awkward for all parties. <laughs> so then a week later, I needed to show the place again. Again, I gave notice to announce my presence. So I take the people into the bedroom and thank God the bed is empty this time. I laugh and tell the people that are touring about what happened last time. So then I start talking about the spacious walk-in closets and, none of the, and one of the people opened the closet door and sure enough, Joe is crouched down under a shelf. Hey. <laughs> so this, Hello. Is, this is obviously a hundred times more awkward than the last time and I wish I could burn it out of my memory. <clears throat> Needless to say, ne- neither tour group ended up going forward with the house. It's a random guy <laughs> like, crouched in, in, I can, in can, the closet. I now. can imagine that Joe is stew. <laughs> Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Under a shelf, like, what the fuck are you doing still here? <laughs> yeah, just Obi Wan. Hello there. <laughs> Is that why you said I wasn't allowed in the house? So I just I went in the cupboard instead. <laughs> Brian, that was quite good. I did cringe so hard, my willy went inside me. Yeah. I have to pop it back out with a warm spoon later. <laughs> There's uh, something else. Nurse it back out. <laughs> yeah. If you've got any cringy stories, which you'd like Ryan to read out on the podcast. Why not um, DM them to him on Twitter at Shouts Like Ryan? Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. E- e- email- I've it for a year, but why not? All right, don't be salty. <laughs> email your DMs to Ryan's salty, quiet Twitter at Shouts Like Ryan. And he'll yeah. read them out on his mon- in his monotone voice on the podcast so that everyone can hear your shame, unless it's anonymous, then nobody will have to know it's you, apart from you. But when you hear it, you'll feel so bad. You'll be like, oh, God, why did I tell him that? But yeah. there you go. You can... Uh, Change your name as well. You're yeah, use an anonymous like, name. Yeah, yeah. Just call yourself Stu. I'll just add <coughs> names in. Oh, I'll make up names. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. There you go, then. Ryan actually using an algorithm in his brain makes up a name for you. Mm. What, what would mine be? No. What was what would Stu, what would <laughs> Stu's be? <laughs> a pubert. Pubert. What do you think of that, pubert? Yeah. Moving mm. swiftly on to the fucking main feature. Gonna take Stu and Ryan with me, and then we're gonna talk about some stuff. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's time for the main feature, uh, which is today about violent video games. <coughs> well, just to translate that to normal people, violent video games. It's like a video game, right? But it's really violent. It's got blood, guts, gore. Mm. Like, just fucking punching people in the head. Yeah? Yeah, Punisher that came out yeah, on the Xbox PlayStation 2. It was fucking brutal. You could grab saws and just torch people and then cut them in half. Or you could throw them into glass recycling bins and then, like, smash it. I think I remember watching someone play this in a local video game shop back in the day, level one. Might have been Stu, actually, on a, on a college lunch break. It did look pretty cool, to be fair. Do you remember how that one, Stu? Any good memories of that one? Of Punisher 2, yeah. But you could, didn't you be able to put someone's face to it? Band saw? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. My teeth are itching just thinking yeah. about it. Oh, you could like throw someone on the kitchen counter and then you're shaking the rack of knives at them. So it all... Oh, so it all pins them to the table? Yeah, yeah. Yes! That's cool, actually. I like that. Yeah. So it was a Marvel game full of blood and guts, really, before mm. that kind of thing was cool. My only regret is that it, it, it wasn't John Bernthal, so it wasn't going <laughs> every five minutes and making mm. angry grunt noises, which is all he ever did, that guy. He's so mm. grunty. Um, it reminds me a bit, I suppose, from your description of Sleeping Dogs. I was just going to say, yeah, sleeping dogs with the uh, ice chipper. Yeah, oh, that was fucking rough. Well, mm. for some reason, that's a pallet with a load of swordfish heads, like, point up, just <laughs> randomly sat there. Like, there's no safety on them. It's just like, yeah, we've just got a load of swordfish heads sticking right up. I know Hong Kong probably has different health and safety standards to, to the UK, but even so, mm. so you just pick people up and, like, launch them onto a pallet full of swordfish heads, like, fucking hell. Or we'll drop a V8 engine onto somebody. <laughs> that game was fucking rough. Uh, Stu, do you think of any good ones off of your little list, which we definitely don't have because we're just thinking of this off the top of heads, really? Stu, tell us all about a violent game, my friend. Quake 4. <sighs> Sorry, I took it by surprise. All right, so just go on, Quake 4, let's, let's, let's launch into it. Yeah, it's like Grim Robocop, isn't it? Like Grim Robocop. You have your legs cut off and you get turned into a strog. Yeah, oh, yeah right, on the yeah. assembly line. <laughs> Yeah, you get to see it all in first person. That's what makes it so harrowing. No, it's brilliant, to be fair. It's a bit about maybe two-thirds of the way through the game, is it? Not even that. It's probably like a third. Yeah. Yeah. Because you play for the Strog Orange Man for a while. (laughs) Strog Robocop. Yeah, so for the start of the game, you're like a standard Marine guy with, you know, he's got his assault rifle and his his bulletproof vest. And then you get captured by the Strog, who are, of course, Quake's legendary weird-looking alien baddies. And then, like Stu said production line it's horrible it's really awful it's good though when you come out though because you are you're faster aren't you you can jump higher and you've got yeah. more health but um, yeah, yeah you get to see everything 
being ripped apart, needles going in your body and all blood splitting out. Oh, yeah. All the yellow needles. Reminds me of when we played... Um, what was the Quake 4 online shooter? Uh, oh, that was that enemy something. Enemy Battleground? What was it called? I know what you mean. It's like um, Battlefield, but Quake. Yeah, but me and you got really into that for some reason, didn't we? We did for a bit, yeah. And then everyone stopped playing it. When we'd be in Strogs, and you could, there was a certain Strog class that you could disguise as the other team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we'd both just do that, wouldn't we? And just wander around with people. And then when it was like one person on their own, kill them. Yeah, because we started really role-playing people playing for the other team. Oh, so yeah. we'd follow other people around, like, covering them for ages. Like, oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, don't worry about it. Melee attack to the back of the head. Lols! And then they'd <laughs> run off and cause some damage. It was fucking well good. So, yeah, that was good. I was thinking, right, the straw conveyor belt, the bit that really stood out for me was clever. It was the bit where they implant a chip into your head. And then all the strong text on the screen just turns to English. Yeah, that was good, that bit, yeah. Very clever. I was like, ooh, that's well good. Actually, no, I, I love my overly immersive first-person shooters. So I was like, oh, this mm. is amazing. So, yeah, good shout, Stu. Quake 4, orange Robocop scene. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Ryan, do you want to match him with a uh, great violent scene? Violent scene. Yeah, yeah, go on then. Dead Space 2. Oh. I'm just going to stick this needle in my eye. Oh, that was fucking and it awful. Was, uh, interactive as well and if you got it wrong like uh, Isaac died in a horrible <laughs> way like blood splitting everywhere screaming in agony which was pretty brutal and if you got it right he was screaming in agony with blood splitting everywhere yeah and it, but it, was only, it was only a tiny bit of blood that came out of his eye when the needle left oh that bit was fucking awful needle come out and then a little bit of blood like and then spread all over his eye and it was, yeah. yeah have I ever told you guys I, was somewhat, I, was, I once had to let a doctor poke my eyeball yeah yeah he put the sound what did he poke it with his finger, he was in the glove. Oh, he, right, not his penis, no. Well, I don't know. I, I don't have my glasses on, it could have been. Uh. But, but he, he put some drops in my eye, right? And drops so, of what? <laughs> Pre- well, again, I, again, I am worried about it now. I, mean, I, I didn't get pink eye, so I can assume it wasn't. A bit of pre in your eye. Something pink, was coming, something pink and tubular was coming towards my eye. And I was trying to back away from it, like. <gasps> And he was like, no, don't back away. Just take it, bro. Take it. <laughs> Just take it, lad. <laughs> yeah, take it, lad. And so I had to sit there and let him take it. And when he touched the surface on my eyeball, my vision kind of walked like whoop. Like um, like an effect someone will put in the first person mm. shooter if someone poked your eyeball. It was horrible. <laughs> it was fucking well grim. So, yeah, the good, that's a good recommend, Ryan. That's pretty gross. Um, should I do one next? Should you want me to talk about yeah. one? Yeah, thanks, guys. Doom 2016, Glory Kills. Yeah, some they're of, pretty violent, aren't they? Some of those were pretty pretty cool. Yeah, but it's not too bad, because it's only demons that you're murdering, isn't it? So. Yeah, but it's still gory, though, and violent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, twisting demons' heads off and stuff. It was well good. Seeing the one on Eternal, <laughs> when it comes out, it just punches one on the top of the head, and the neck just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> like whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, his like, ears have gone into all the way into his chest. So it's just like a little mound where his top of his head... Is. That is amazing. See, I love that. That's awesome. The one I was like was the Barons of Hell where he cuts his horn off and then stabs him with his own horn. I'm like, ah, fuck you, pal. And the mancubus is just exploded in like in just a pile of shit on the floor. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, so yeah, there's some good stuff in there. I the one where he pulls the, uh, the imp's jaw off. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> Scrap's like, nah. There were some well good glory kills. They really recaptured the spirit of doom. Hmm. Oh, I've also seen on Twitter if you hold the disc upside down, it says wood. Yeah. It's like, where do you want to put this copy of wood? <laughs> 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 Lols! Right, uh, oh, back to Stu, I think, isn't it? Stu, hit us with a game. Tomb Raider. <laughs> oh, uh, all Tomb Raiders, to be fair, isn't it? Even the old ones are fucking grim in places. No, particularly the newer ones, when uh, Lara dies or you fail a quick time event. Yes, when she's sliding down a, like a rapid, say, and if you don't press the button quick enough, just a big rusty pipe impales her. Yeah, there's yeah. loads of them in there. Like, oh, when you have to swim in down this river or something on the first one, and if you go the wrong way, you get you see her get her head smacked in some rocks, yeah. and then impaled and stuff. It's just floating corpse going past. Like that's a brutally over the top compared to like the game. Yeah, do we was. think the de- the game's designers were sadists? To know the ones where she gets killed by bow and arrows are pretty grim as well. Yeah, so it's just like fucking hell. Calm down. <laughs> it's well, well brutal. Even like the old play PS One games had some grim stuff. Like when she fell to her death, even before the days of Ragdoll, she was like <laughs> all just like a broken pile on the floor. Like, Ugh. especially if you did the dive. Like, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, remember on Assassin's Creed, I used to climb to the very top of the tallest tower, and you'd do your graceful swan dive off. <laughs> but for some reason, Ezio ever just like, ah fuck this, and just did like a really kind of limp jump off. <laughs> 
bouncing off the side of a tower, just ragdolling down to his death, like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Assassin dickheads. So I, I never liked Assassin's Creed, just the fact that Ryan was really good at it and made everything look natural. And my guy was just, like, running in, like just running into walls instead of climbing up. like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Everything he did was lame compared to Ryan's version of it. Do you remember, Stu, we were laughing because all he had to do in Assassin's Creed 1 was jump into a small shed. Yeah. Like, if you lay in some, like, not even very high plants, the guys were like, where the fuck's he gone? Or you could just sit on a bench. <laughs> yeah, sit on the bench. It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not the guy we're after. The guy we're after was running. He sat on the bench. <laughs> remember, we, remember when we went um, shopping that time and it was, like, really busy? So we were doing... The- <laughs> Assassin's Creed walking through a crowd. Fucking oh, that was with the, Yeah, we were around uh, Cheshire Oaks, wasn't it? And took it in turns as Assassin's Creed Hidden Blade killing each other. No, because what you'd have to do, we'd go into a shop and then you'd have to try and leave the shop without anyone noticing and then assassin kill people. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, say people, it was just us. There was four of us. Oh, yeah. We split off yeah. into two. It was, yeah, it was, it, it was like the multiplayer of Assassin's Creed 2. Ready for my next one? Go on, Ryan, hit us. Uh, Bioshock, Burial at Sea. Oh, I've not actually played this one. Go ahead. Well, right in the start, you're playing as Elizabeth in first person. Yeah. And she has a lobotomy. Oh. Ugh. Mm. That sounds like a hell of an experience. Yeah, so get rid of that, all that psychic shit. And all is that it stuff. done only in first person, is it? Yeah, yeah. So there's some guy, like, giving it all that in your face and everything, and he's got this needle, and he just, like, hammers it into the side of your head. Oh. And bottomizes you, and it's pretty grim. Yeah, that sounds fucking awful. There's, yeah, something, about, yeah. there's something about lobotomies, it's just... Yeah, it's horrible. Oh, fuck yeah. Hell. People fucking with your brain. Stu, have you ever been lobotomized? Yep. You needed it, mate. You were getting a bit crazy. You couldn't really be contained anymore. You were getting, like, really horny all the time. Kept taking his pants off in public whenever he got too hot. Uh, you needed it. Let's get it out of here. I'm going to get my dick out. Classic Stu catchphrase. So, okay, yeah, fair enough. That does sound pretty awful. I think the Bioshock series in general, did it have a couple of bits that were like, ooh? Yeah, that was like by far the worst. Getting yeah. lobotomised in first person is pretty grim. I think the most disgusting bit in the whole franchise was that cop out of a last boss in the first Bioshock. Like, it's like really psychological and clever. All the way through the game, the last boss is just a big blue man with superpowers. So, oh, that's a bit disappointing. It's not as red. I thought he was blue. I was covered in Adam, which was red. How would he be blue? <laughs> be blue oh, he, he went grey blue when he died, that's why. Because it, okay, no. c- c- it all left him. Um, so, do you want to me to read one out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mortal Kombat! Dun, 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 Yeah, Mortal Kombat. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. Well, obviously, it's a classic. On the on the first game, you could, like, punch people's hearts out. Uh, what what other fatalities were there? Sure, like, Scorpion ripped your spine out. Sub-Zero likes doing that. And throughout the game, he always pulls you. Pulls your whole skull out now. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Now that's an extraction. <laughs> yeah. By your spine, pulls your whole skeleton out. Yeah, there was a character that kissed someone, and then they like blew up like a balloon and exploded mm. in one of the later games. Remember that one? There was a man with a sharp hat who could cut your head off with it. <laughs> man with a sharp hat. Yeah, like had a sharp hat, didn't he? Even in the in the later games, they go all out. Have you ever seen? Have you seen any of the Mortal Kombat no. Eleven? Fatal I've seen what, not. 11 but remember the guy with the sharp part he like starts it spinning and throws it into the ground so it makes like a circular sort of oh wow and then holds one leg in each arm and pulls <laughs> you like dick first through it <laughs> that reminds me when I was in high school in my last year of high school uh, the year 7s and year 8s used to get this, do the thing called getting leggers which is where for people who don't know they like wind up the year 11s and run away from him being like Billy Big Bollocks if he got away like oh fucking we winded up those year 11s lad but what if they got caught they got pulled what this was in the old bus shed the bus shed they call it a bus, the a bus shed. shed don't you the bike shed there was a metal pole like uh, holding the seal on the roof up and what we used to do for captured year 7s was get a leg either side of it much like the sharp hat and just fucking ding dick first into the pole they didn't fucking mess with you again after that I'll tell you they didn't walk straight ever again either I, think we, I reckon sold... you got pulled again this is pulled by choice yeah, <laughs> yeah. pull me daddy <laughs> 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 Pull me, Daddy. Yeah, that's probably what it was like. Fucking hell. Why did you always get weird? No, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, fair enough. I did get pulled voluntarily. You've got me. So, yeah, of course. Mortal Kombat! Yes, of course. Does need a mention. Uh, so, who's next? He wants to read another game out. Go ahead, girls. What, well, Sniper Elite? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. When you could slow mo shoot someone's balls and you'd get to see it in an X ray vision. <laughs> yeah, you get, to see the, you get to see the testes explode. <laughs> you get to see my testes explode if you stay a bit later, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, see your meters explode. 
with my big gun nozzle or fire out <laughs> some warm ammunition <laughs> into your face. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fair enough. Sniper Elite was pretty grim. <laughs> but it's not even that. I like watching the um even if you got like a headshot, you see the skull fracture crack split apart, fly out of the body and then fucking you can see the bullet going round everywhere else. And yeah, the bullet ricochets off the bone, so I once shot someone in the chest and it ricocheted up the neck and then out the face. I think I shot ricocheted off his spine and shot him in the dick from behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down the tube. <laughs> his down metus, the shaft. His meters was literally a gun nozzle. Fucking rude. Anyway, Ryan, what do you want to think of one? Do you want to think of a game with it? I don't want to think of one. I've got an extensive list. Sorry, think of one off your list. <laughs> the Darkness. Yes. Yeah, good shout. And I'm going to put them together, but Darkness 2 as well. Yeah. Because, like, you could eat people's hearts with yep. the said darkness, and then, like, there was a lefty and righty, wasn't there? Yeah, the two little tentacle heads. Yeah, and one used to eat all the hearts, and the other never got one. No, oh, no, he didn't. Sometimes he tried to get one, and the other one just stole it off him. Yeah. Like a pair of fucking cats fighting over him. Fucking a... hearts <laughs> everywhere. And then, but you could uh, swipe the heads clean off, couldn't you, as well? Yeah. It's the way he just really casually plucked the hearts out, like, I mean, the tentacle is well good. Bite the heads off. <coughs> and then, like on The Darkness 2, you could swipe like left and right, up and down, and just dismember people. Yeah. And there was an execution, I remember, on the second one. You pick someone up by the leg, so they're upside down, and then you proceeded with like three different tentacle arms to pull all the limbs off. That's brilliant. So, yeah, very violent. Very violent. Also, it, was, it was like cartoony, so it wasn't as grim as it could have been. Lucky, wasn't it? The first game had one of the most violent lines in a video game I've ever heard as well. With the darkness, who's voiced by is it Mike Patton? Uh, you think so? He's a metal singer, isn't he? Mm. He's a line of "I'll put your teeth on a grindstone." It's like, ooh, mm. what a horrible image! <laughs> but thanks for that, mate. That, that's how I'd like to go. What put your teeth to a grindstone? Yeah, fucking hell, mate. There's probably nicer ways. I'd rather drown in custard. <laughs> Well, like, nom nom nom, it's so nice, and they just die. I thought you were going to say drowning and cum. No, that's more your thing, Stu. No, it's not, it's your thing. Yeah, it'd, Too take like... a, it'd take a lot of men, wouldn't it? <laughs> a lot of men. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuff that a hundred men or more could ever do. I want to drown in a pool of cum. He wants to drown. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know what that song was. <laughs> yes. it, was, it was well. It's like it's like we established when we were setting up to record the episode at the start. None of us could sing, mm. but it was meant to be Toto's Africa. All oh, right, yeah, I'll probably yeah, probably get that now. Yeah, we're far too awkward and English to sing with any degree of style, really. And if you tell me you are, you're a fucking liar. Uh, so yeah, do you want me to go again? Yeah, is it my turn? To yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Soldier of Fortune. Oh, I, I was going to say this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all had the same idea because we used to fucking love Shoulder of Fortune. Shoulder of Fortune. <laughs> shoulder of Fortune. <laughs> you play as a shoulder. Um, no, it's all play... about the shotgun in that game. Yeah, you played as John Mullet, who's a mustachioed, like Chuck Norris looking guy. Who, yeah, uh... and he could reload shotguns ridiculously fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they came out with his thumb, the shells did. <laughs> they put the shells in like one per millisecond. Mm. But yeah, it's like really horrible dismembering, like you could blow someone's head off. I used to just like throwing people with knives, uh, sticking the knives in them. Yeah, <laughs> but like the slashes, sta- the lash- the slashes stayed on the body as well, didn't it? And the bullet had had exit wounds as well on the on the corpses. Yeah, you could shoot their arms off, or you could, or you could shoot their intestines, and all it, it all fell out and trying to hold. Oh them back yeah, in. it was awful. I was playing it once, right, and there was a guy running, ran round the corner in a hospital corridor at me, so I shot him in the legs, so his legs blew off. And his torso sailed through the air and headbutted a glass cabinet head first. <laughs> and his torso was just laying on the floor with all fucking glass sticking out of his face, going, rrr, rrr. And he was like, oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> but not as horrible as what happened to someone who, when you were playing Stu, right? Yeah, when I shot that guy in the head, and his head exploded and his neck stump was screaming. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so he shot all his arms and legs off, it was just a trunk screaming on the floor. <laughs> 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 That's fucking awful. Well, we were screaming, trying to shoot it to make him stop screaming. Yeah. Ah, stop screaming! Ah! Yeah, please just die! <laughs> Alright, what's next on the list, though? Uh, Manhunt. Oh, of course. How can we... How, how yeah, that's that on my so list long? as well, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, go on, Stu. Re- tell us about Manhunt, you fucker. Well, the first kill he does with a shard of glass, isn't it? A plastic oh, no, it's bag. Not. Yeah, plastic bag. A plastic B. Yeah. Yeah. Plasty yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they call it. And if you do the if you do the brutal one, I remember you put it, you 
as you're choking him with it, you turn around and you're just punching him in the face while he's choking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, also the on the inside of the back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the other one, which was just as brutal, is, is while, he, while he is suffocating, you turn around and you just lean him in the face. Yep. And there was uh, Pigsy as well, from an earlier episode we mentioned. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a man with a big swingy dick with a chainsaw wearing a pig mask. But the, I think the worst ones for me from Manhunt was the machete kills. Oh, go on. Because each one, uh, chopping the head off. And it made a really grim noise as well. There was one, it? yeah, like you hit him in like the side, and they, they went all like horrible and wheezy, like, <gasps> while he's proceeded to lop the head off. But like one was like either straight down the front, like through the windpipe and everything first, yeah. and then cut the head off. Or the other one was like through the side, and that was like back arm swinging. Oh. And it was sort of like a sore action when you hit the, when you hit the neck, like, <coughs> like, like a bit of a saw. Yeah, it just felt very again. meaty and weighty. Like it was felt real. Yeah, it's yeah, no, exactly pretty grim I mean. to be honest. Oh, the, like the, even the hammer as well, wasn't it? Where you could just like just swing the hammer and just hit him right in the top of the head and just watch watch it go all floppy. Yeah, it's pretty down. very well animated. Uh, so but they did. Fun, it's a shame with the uh, Manhunt Two. They had to um, tone it right down and then put all weird effects on it, like it was uh, psychological. Yeah, the sensors got all of them, didn't they? Mm. Uh, anything else you want to add about Manhunt Two? About the sickle kill, it goes. Like undoes your body zip, aka oh, the gooch. Straight to the gooch, like. Oh, yes, yeah, from behind, straight to the like cock and bars, and then pulls it through through the yeah, gooch. Yeah, that sounds. So it just undoes you from the bottom, and yeah. you on all your skeleton and guts fall out. Mm. It's like a like a carrier bag of the skin left. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. How, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I imagine it anyway. But yeah, that sounds pretty awful to be fair. Um, other Rockstar games as well, to be fair, had some proper violent stuff going on in them. Like yeah. that horrible scene in GTA Five, which wasn't really necessary when you're torturing somebody. There's Trevor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then I did like it at the end of that bit where he bundled him in the car instead of killing him, drove, drove him to the airport. Yeah. It's like, come on, mate, get out of here. <laughs> I'll let you go. But yeah, that bit was a proper grim. And then Red Dead Redemption 2, I once watched somebody play it, where they shot all of someone's limbs and head off, lassoed the stump, aka <laughs> the rest of their body, and dragged it through a lake full of cro- full of alligators until one of the alligators ate it. Mm-hmm. I actually watched someone do that once. I question their sanity yeah I would as well yeah. but there you go do you have any other GTA slash Red Dead horribly violent scenes it's just in general isn't it really yeah the things you can do off your own back really it's like running yeah. people over and car bombs and stuff and awful then just shit like that blowing, yeah. like, people up is pretty violent isn't it yeah there is a scene in Red Dead Redemption 2 where someone gets like half skinned and left on a wooden rack in a forest and you have to go and rescue him I won't say any more than that because I don't want to spoil it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty grim, that bit, isn't it? That was fucking horrible. I was like, ugh, what the fuck's going on here? They're li- the gang's literally called the Skinners. I was like, I imagine, like, Principal Skinner until I met them. <laughs> it's like, it's the children. <laughs> but no, it was uh, a gang of people that skin you. So, okay, um, any other final games you want to mention? I've got I've, one left I've on my list. I've got about but... 12 left. Well, I've mentioned a couple more, you reckon, and then move on. Did, what, I've do do? done my research, you see. I've done my research. Mm, obviously. <laughs> What about Wu Tang Clan? Oh, two yeah. two Wang Clan. Yeah, that, that had some brutal finishes in it, didn't it? Yeah, I remember. some good finishes. Yeah, I played a bit of Wu Tang Clan. I remember that horrible control pad that came free with it. That was violent. That was an act of violence, making you play with that fucking thing. <coughs> uh, did you play Thrill Kill? Did it get banned for it wages? Did. It, it was never released in this country, but I played a pirate version of it from America. Yeah, it wasn't. Good. It was shit. Yeah. The actual blood just looked like red cotton wool Jam. balls. Not even that, it's like red balls dripping out of your wound. Like, oh no, my red balls are coming out. Yeah, that's on my <laughs> list. Balls. Well, like a midget on stilts. Yeah, there's a midget on stilts. There was a, like a shaved gorilla looking thing. A doctor with a scalpel who cut you all up. It was pretty shit, to be fair. Mm. After all that drama in the UK about it getting banned. Yeah. Ugh, they weren't banging anything decent. I won't worry about it, everyone. Don't even fucking bother. Any others, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Carmageddon? Yeah, because you got to run people over a lot of that, didn't you? Yeah. Like little 2D people. <laughs> when you run them over. Is that yeah. right? I never played much Carmageddon, you know. It's one of my sins of gaming. We all have sins of gaming, don't we? That's one of mine. You ever played much Carmageddon, Stu? Yeah, Carmageddon 2. The new one's pretty good. That's worth trying. That was a Steam release, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's on Xbox One as well. Xbox Juan. Oh, fair enough. There you go. So that's a shout to let recommend. Go hit up the new Carmageddon game. It's only cheap as well. I got it for six quid. Not bad at all, really. I'm yet to find many games in the Nintendo Switch shop that are worth buying for five quid. Uh, And obviously, Stu, what about Postal 2? 
Yeah, Postal 2's quality. When you, like, shoot people's heads off in slow-mo. Yeah, or you could, like, piss at them when you've got gonorrhea, make them sick, and then blow their head off, and there's just sick coming out of the neck holes. Especially when you get the mud so it creates more blood. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit dated now, but it's still pretty funny, because you can use scissors as, like, um, throwing stars, can't you? And impale people with scissors. Yeah, you could also just walk up to someone and pour petrol over him and then flick a match at him. And there's also that one where you wake up with a, as a gimp, don't you? Because you get... <laughs> yeah. Can you, is that the one game where you can use a cat as a silencer? Yeah, yeah, the silencer is a cat for the machine gun and the shotgun. And then after the cat's run out of uses, it gets fired out of the end and then it explodes on people. <laughs> it's just a mash of, like, lumps and gore. It's more comedy violence than postal, though. I know, yeah, but it's still pretty grim once what you can do. Like, it, some people thought of that. Like, we could use a cat as a silencer. I use my cat as a silencer before I go. What, on the end of your shotgun? <coughs> yeah. Not on the end of his penis. Wow, I've not fucked my cat. <laughs> that's terrible. How could you... I mean, on the end of a shotgun, that's fine to say, Stu, but not on the end of a penis, that's too far. That's a, that's a, that's a fine line. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, okay, what were you discussing then? So, Postal 2, was it? Yeah. Where you could throw a rotten cow's head at people and poison them. Yeah, yeah. That game was brutal. It was, like, really crass, like, it's not, like, going to win any awards, but it was good fun, wasn't it? So, um, the other one I wanted to mention was the Resident Evil series. That's got some good gore and violence in it. It's like these zombies, though, isn't it? Well, it's bits like when Nemesis puts a tentacle down someone's throat to kill him and just rips the tentacle out of the stomach. Like, well, no need for that. Yeah. Just shoot with a fucking rocket launcher you carry around with you, you fucking sadist. <laughs> but, so, yeah, Res- Resi had some good bits. Um, there's, like... Um, the dogs that chewed people up and there's a bit where a man gets pecked to death by crows so okay uh, about uh, yeah, God of War God of Chaw that's uh, God of War <laughs> so anyone needs to understand that yeah that's right it's about a really angry Greek man called Kyritos mm. there's a scene where you pull someone's head off isn't you isn't there? and you can see the neck tear <clears throat> oh yeah is that on the PS3 one yeah God of War 3 that is I can't remember who it is you're killing now was it Chermes it might be Hermes yeah yeah, he pull his head off because you can use his like head as a lamp or something. That's right. His eyes like that. <laughs> yeah, but you, it's like you you see him twisting like that and then pulling back, and all the, all the neck rips at the front like that, and uh, it just pops off in the end. Yeah, and that's a bit where he punches somebody so many times in the face that the face is just like a a plate full of meat where a face used to be. But it won't. Yeah, let, that was uh, its use. Yeah, that's right. But it won't let you stop. You're doing it for ages and ages. It's like fucking hell. Mm. Giving up. I thought the end credits were going to roll over it. It took so long. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Chod of Chaw, he was a violent lad, wasn't he? Was. A uh, final one to mention for me would be uh, classic game, State of Emergency. State of Emergency. That was on the PS2, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. No one ever played it. They out in the riots. It was no Russian from Modern Warfare 2 before no Russian from Modern Warfare 2, because you could just stand there with a machine gun and gun down innocents in them all. Oh, okay. So before that was even edgy to do that. Yeah. Cause Call and of Duty or you could just stand there and just throw grenades and watch people like ragdoll everywhere. Wow, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty brutal. <laughs> I actually played that once, but yeah, it yeah. was a Rockstar game, wasn't it? It was. It's... Do you remember it, Stu? Yeah, it was really good, wasn't it? Yeah. It was that little um, Mexican bloke you could be. Yeah, you could be. You could get a flamethrower as well, you know, just stand in the crowd. Just That's wild. Did it have, like, quite cartoony graphics? No, it had... PS2 graphics. I remember the box yeah. art. The guys on the box art always look kind of cartoony. That's just because it was like shit CG. Yeah. Ah, fair enough then. Well, that sounds really grim, to be fair. I'll have to give that a try sometime. That may sound like a sadist, but it's not what I meant. I mean, it sounds quite good. I suppose No Russian must be worth a mention there, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. Because that was like pretty. That was like shocking for the sake of being shocking, that Well, one. do you know, it never actually tells you to, to shoot yeah. anybody. It you doesn't... can go the whole mission without actually shooting people. Yeah. That's what I did. All it says is remember no Russian and you walk out. You've got the gun, but you don't actually... It doesn't tell you to shoot anybody. I suppose that's an experiment to see if you're an actual maniac or not, isn't it? I was just shot over their heads because I was in, you're in character as a CIA agent undercover. <laughs> <laughs> just leave the killing to the baddies. It's like, yeah, I'm a goodie. Look, look at me being a goodie. <laughs> Until the cops start attacking you, then you actually have to start shooting in some people. But fair enough. So there we go. That was the violent game section. Um, so we're moving on now to probably one of our favourite sections of this here podcast. It's uh, what people responses. You said that wrong. Oh, I have to say it in a, in, in a voice, don't I? Yeah. What people responses! Yeah. Starring us and also you, our listeners. Yay! So again, Dave, insert spooky pun here, Cooper, at Deluxe Man. It was a revelation playing Wu-Tang game on PS1. 
I remember the uh, fatalities, sorry, finishes so vividly. My mind was blown the first time I see them. And as for the gore in general, I honestly don't mind it as long as it works in the context of the game. Yeah, I mean, no one wants to see a Mario game where he gets his arm cut off and he's like bleeding out all over the floor. That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> I want to see that. would be pretty funny. <laughs> or when like Yoshi snaps and just starts murdering everyone. <laughs> Goes on the killing spree. Bites Mario's head off or something. Yeah. Starts laying eggs in everyone's throats. Oh, wow. That'd be We've great. Um, face huggers. Just blazing over that. Uh, Geeks Freaks podcast at Geek Freaks Pod. Yep. They said um, Fallout games with vats. Because you could target like the head and watch it explode and the eyes fall everywhere. That is true, though. So there's a perk called was it blood and bl- bloody mess. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that one because every time you shot them, they just exploded. And br- I liked watching them ragdoll in places. No, oh, true. It's a bit more like yeah. if it's just their head blows off and their body's like all flobble lobbly all over the floor. That's a bit yeah. Better. Yeah, and you used to get a headshot, didn't you? And the head would explode and just leave the two eyes just spinning in space and slow. Oh yeah, that was that like glitch in New Vegas, wasn't it? Where the headshot ex- froze mid explosion, so they were walking around with like a modern art exhibit for a head. Mm. And that yeah. was that was quite cool. Um, at uh, at Colonel Falcon, oh yeah, as a uh, as responsid. We all like Colonel with, Falcon. With uh, say the first time he used the lancer on the locust in uh, Gears of War. Oh yeah, with the chainsaw, just, just like cutting one in half. That was pretty awesome. That was like re- again, it was really weighty and real, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, really- I remember watching it and it being a proper like whoa moment. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, everything's weighty and meaty in Gears of War, isn't so it? So I heard the uh, they got the. The na- they got the sound from the uh, the chainsaw was from they let Stu play it, yeah. and then when he made the noise when he saw what happened, they just used that. Yeah, I can yeah. see it happening. Yeah, I can see that happening. So, uh, so you, you ever told the Epic Games have used your talents, Stu? Yeah. Did they use you for Fortnite as well? Yeah. Like when someone um, wins, it, when someone wins, it just goes, "It's coming." It. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Do you want me to read one out? In a bit, I'm quite happy reading them for now. You carry on then, love. It's all uh, your... At Grief Burrito. Ooh, Grief Burrito, um, our friends. So he always remembers getting to the end of Dead Space 2 when you have to use a machine to stick a needle in your eye. And if you do it wrong, it slams down into Isaac's face, killing him horribly. What's he saying? Ha-ha. Yes, ha-ha. A true, a true serial killer to laugh at <laughs> such a thing. Mr. Haswild. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, eh? Ooh. Arcade a- Adriano. At Arcade Adriano says in Bioforge, you can pick up a severed arm of an inmate and use said arm to hit and kill the criminal. I mean, it's adding salt to the very wound, isn't it? Very gruesome, but also very funny. Oh, that does sound fun. Yeah, beating beating someone to death with their own arm is pretty grim. I'd love to beat you to death with your own arm. Right? Yeah, I bet you would. But in a loving way. Cunt. In a loving way. Mm. Like I'd, I'd cuddle you whilst I was doing it. It yeah. won't be entirely horrible, I promise. So Ronin Geek official podcast, which is at Ronin Geekery, uh, definitely God of War 3, when Kratos cuts off Hermes' legs just to get his boots. So there you go, then. So that's what we, it was Hermes stole his boots. Also the fight also the fight against Hercules. <laughs> I can't stop saying it like that. Hercules, in the game, same game, he, beat, he gets beat into the bloodiest of pulps and it was an unforgettable first playthrough. Yeah, so there you go, Gears, Gears of War, full of blood and guts and angry Greek people. God of War. I said Gears of War, didn't it? It's yeah. a good crossover, that, to be fair. Kratos. <laughs> Kratos with a lancer just killing locusts. Um, Game Tripper UK, at Game Tripper UK. That bit in Quick 4 where King gets captured, strapped to the table and strogified. That's a good word, strogified. Horrible. Her- oh, Spec Ops the Lion's White Phosphorus was heartbreaking. Do you ever just... Do you ever oh, play? yeah, it's supposed to... Yeah. So you fire white phosphorus, don't you? But then you have to go in there and you can see everyone yeah, suffering. because and- you thought you were firing on the baddies but you're actually finding on civilians trying to get away. Was mm. the whole twist, wasn't it? That bit was yeah, horrible. Yeah, it like a psychological game or something, that one. Yeah, it's like it's basically about a guy going slowly insane as the game goes on. So he starts tripping out because he's because of that moment. He starts going like uh, PTSD, doesn't he? He starts tripping out and it gets really weird. Uh, couldn't you wait off a rift worm in Gears 2 was epic. Never, was that good? Oh, it's a big massive worm that eats you. Just cut your way out, yeah. Nice. I have dreams about that sometimes, but the, yeah. worm's, the worm's got Stu's face. It's not a worm, is it? It's a penis. Yes, yes. I was trying to be suggestive, but it was a penis. That's what there was. It's coming it for Stu's ruining the ruining the metaphor. Uh, cutting off your finger in heavy rain can die in a tire fire. 
yeah, I've seen that scene played. Never played it myself, but I've seen it played, and it's pretty gross. And you can then have to run around going, Sean! Afterwards for a bit. Sean! <laughs> uh, arcade Attack at Arcade Attack UK. Anything from the first two Silent Hills, the whole I'm a normal bloke, why am I smashing these monsters to little bits angle is fascinating. I think it can be quite cathartic and no, it does not contribute directly to violence in real life. That's true, because I've never wanted to go out and beat to death a faceless nurse afterwards from playing a Silent or Hill game. Toddlers with knives. Yeah, toddlers with knives, man. It's a real thing. Toddlers yeah. with knives are terrifying. You need to deal with them as quickly as possible with a shotgun. Cut or curb stomp. Yeah, but you can't do that in Silent Hill. You can't like, awkwardly swing a oh. pipe around. Oh, in- Oh, I thought you went like... Ooh! Yeah. Oh, you were taking the real life race, Stu. No? Yeah, good. Ooh, that could be really awkward. All right, um, go on, Ryan, you can take back over. You All right, so uh, Jamie, Jamie Dean Hultgren, not Hulkgren, as we got on last week. Yeah. Hulk smash. Uh, at, at just Jamie Dean. It says he's not a huge fan of gore. Um, he doesn't have a problem with it, save when it's just there for shock value and serves no purpose. That's fair enough. Uh, it's it's just the types of games that aren't overly gory. His favourite is using the Lancer in the first Gears of War. Fair play. What noise does it make, Stu? So, yeah, that's what readers' response is from this week. So, thanks for uh, contributing to the podcast. We're always very happy to receive your input, and we look forward to hearing you in the next episode as well. Yay! So, that's that bit out of the way done there. And now, which leads us to move on to the probably most mystical element of the podcast, the bit where the magic comes in. It's the Wizard's Tower. Ooh, join us in the Wizard's Tower once more. I am Master Menelak. Or am I Fenrig? I could be either. You never know, because we sound the same. Master Cumrag. Master Cumrag. <laughs> that's you, I believe, yes? Yes, that's me, Master Cumrag. And Master... Um, wizard. Master Wizard. <laughs> Master Erm um, Wizard himself. It's oh, yes. Ah, oh, once more we meet in the Wizard's Tower. Now I will talk... Yes. <laughs> that was, wow. That actually, like, distorted the sound. It was so yeah. good. <laughs> distorted my throat. Let's try again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm actually like your jaw opening up into two pieces, like, <laughs> like, proper distorted your throat. So, Wizard's Tower is, of course, where we each talk about a game and rate it on our big old rating tower. The tower is also, people keep laughing at it for some reason, they don't know why. Just because it's a large tower with a, like bell-shaped summit with a... Slight curve. A slight curve, yes. It's ergonomics, isn't it? Yeah, it's so it doesn't collapse in an earthquake. Yeah, I don't get it. Just, just because there's, like, strengthening sections on the side that some people say look veiny, whatever that means. Yeah. I don't get it. And the two spherical offices at the bottom. Yeah. Well, just... one, one's the human resources and the other's the canteen. Yeah, exactly. It's just convenient layout. Yeah. Stop laughing at our tower. So, anyway, um... Stu, do you want to go first with your game this week? Okay, I'll put Soldier Fortune 2 in at good or thick. It did have that bit where you could like choose a le- level that you wanted and it'd generate one for you. Yeah, true. And it was a lot of fun like killing somebody and then being like CSI and looking for entry and exit <laughs> wounds for bullets. <laughs> wow, look what I did to this guy. <laughs> look how this guy died. <laughs> and the story wasn't too bad. Yeah, I was thick then. Go with thick. I'd agree with thick, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, we've talked about it on the podcast already, but yeah, Soldier Fortune 2. It's got lots of shooting and lots of death. We don't really need to say too much more, do you, Stu? No. Mm-hmm. Ryan, what's your entry for this week? I'm going to do The Darkness 2. Ooh. Yeah. Cool, Which, yeah. it's alright, isn't it? Oh, for <laughs> sake. <laughs> oh, fucking so The Darkness 2 takes place after, the, obviously, The Darkness 1, uh, where you are now the Don of the Mafia, a little bit older than you were before, but they changed the art style to cell shaded, more comic book style. But you, it was the controls were good because you could quad wield essentially. Each of the back buttons was a, either your arms or a tentacle, so you could have like four weapons if you wanted at one point. And shoot yeah. Everything. So that was really good. The only thing is, it was about five hours long, I think. So it was like really short for a full price game. It's not, it was nearly it was nearly ten pound an hour. Yeah, you're right. It was very short, and I I didn't get on with the cartoon style. But no. Well, but where would you put it on but, your? Uh... But the actual play style was good for the first time round, and the story was good. Uh, but I'm gonna put it in okay, just for that. That's... No, actually, I'm gonna put it meh. Whoa! I wasn't expecting that. We not. Straight I'm brutal with my with my scores. It's fine. To be fair, it probably just deserves to be a meh because I didn't really like it. So I agree with you completely. 
Because the first one's one of my favourite games ever, and the second yeah. one just didn't do it for me. Which one am I going to go for? Um, I'm going to go with probably Dead Space, but the first one. That's so what I, I did last week, if you listened. I just can't remember what people do from one week to another. But yeah, you're right, you did do Dead Space. Because you never listen back to episodes. So you don't, I don't need to. I know we did them. This is good enough for me. I, I was there when it was said. just can't remember. Um, so, all right, I'll just jump across one to the left, and I'll say, it's one that we been put on the list, but we'd like to use seven it mentioned. Probably AVP 2, because that did have some nice, horrible stuff going on. Also, brutal executions. Yeah, the Predator could rip people's heads and spines off, like, there's no man, no one's business. You had a spear gun, where you could spear people's heads to walls. <laughs> like, obviously, yeah. separated from the body. That was cool. And there's, there was a whole section where you started out as a chess person, that you had to chew through someone's chest to escape. You did. Like, nom, 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 straight through there. So that was a uh, that was pretty wicked, super wicked, violent style. Oh, I did play as the alien, couldn't you? Like, yeah, you could rip people's faces off pretty much with your yeah. When the, when the teeth showed, you could just pull their head off. Yeah, that's right. That was a fucking well good game. Fair play. I'm gonna put that probably on thick because really, yeah, I really enjoyed the story. No, no, in fact, it wasn't that good. No, I'll demote it by one. Uh, so it's good as satisfactory and yeah, alien isolation yeah I'll demote it down to the lay beneath because I Good. never really got on with the predator campaign once the aliens showed up it wasn't as much fun so it lost points there but other than that I did really enjoy it the marine campaign was dead scary on that one because you were always the, the odds were always against it, against you alright so yeah I think that's the the summary of today's uh, boiling potions in the wizard's tower wouldn't you agree yeah so how are we going to leave the Witch's Tower today, folks? I'm going to get on this bicycle and ride down the stairs. Very well. <laughs> I'll take the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> what was that, a little plane? Just drove off, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, a little plane. <laughs> <laughs> like the dodo in GTA 3 just back to the car yeah. <laughs> oh no I was thinking like a little tiny clown plane or something <laughs> oh, yes that is beautiful either way that was very good next section of the podcast it's probably uh, the one we want you to, people to interact with the most do we have any interactions for next week for last week even Stu not next week we've not had any entries to any of them yet <laughs> mm, is it worth doing it <laughs> well do this one and then if there's still no more entries we'll just sack it off We'll go back to the overly long name game. People preferred that one. All right, so time for the arcade name game, where we say a normal game name in the style of a 90s arcade game cabinet with too many words and like lots of excitement. Uh, so last week's was Hyper Freudian Personal Demon Fighter Horror Challenge Edition. Um, did you guys, either of you guys know that? No, I couldn't figure it out, to be honest. No, Stu? No. Uh, I would ask the listeners, but... Clearly no one's been playing. Um, it was Silent Hill. To be fair, any of the Silent Hill games, because it, it fits any of them. So there we go. Ready for this week's? Mega Biblical Antagonist Argument Resolution of World Edition. I'll say that again in a normal <laughs> voice. Mega Biblical Antagonist Argument Resolution of World Edition. I'm not... Shut up, I'm not just playing the overly long name game. You are... <laughs> So again, one more time, the Mega Biblical Antagonist Argument Resolution of World Edition. Sounds very uh, overly you... long name game. It does style. almost suspiciously, would you say? Yeah. But because, but because I said it, it's because I said it in an arcade voice. It means it's the arcade name game. Because <laughs> well, so, so, you put edition at the end. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so by doing that, I've dodged a bit of a shady issue there. So uh, yeah, okay. So I think that leads us to the end, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll think up a new um, competition. Yeah, yeah, we can think of a new competition for next week to deliver to our lovely readers. Maybe they're getting bored of me waffling shit and they have to guess what I'm well, about. Well, maybe because you're doing it to lovely readers when they're listening. Oh, yeah. Can't stop writing it down. Yeah. That's where I'm going wrong. You can't listen to words on a page. It's impossible. Unless Ryan reads them out to us in his exactly. lovely voice. Exactly. Mm. Okay, so um, let's do the outro. Um, we're on Shout Select come and listen to us I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to say anything else no you're not uh, I'm at Woodstuff on Twitter come and find me yeah. I, I like people Stu anything you want to add like maybe you're back on Twitch or something no nothing I thought you were back on Twitch no we were going to live stream the podcast but it turns out it's a lot of effort yes pain in the ass isn't it <laughs> yeah after the disaster of last week 
Yeah, it means it means we, we, we can never put a, um, a message out saying, OMG, we've made affiliate, thank you so much, have some Twitch icons, which is what everyone seems to do these days. Yeah. Uh, are you happy with that, Ryan? Yeah, Ryan, except you forgot to mention me. That's because you, I, don't, I don't say too much stuff because you get angry at me. I'm on Twitter, at Sharks Like Ryan, and that's it. That's, that's where you can find me. Come and follow him. Yeah. <laughs> See you next week. Can I carry on? Can I carry on, Daddy? Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you all next week. We're all gonna go and uh, watch Game Bro now to learn how to get juiced. Yeah. <laughs> Found it. Found the episode. We're gonna watch it. It's so rare, isn't it? We still found the. It's on an old floppy disk, stored in up the bungle costume's ass. We had to go in there and get it out, and the suit came to life. We'll tell you about it sometime. It was horrible. Up the bungle. <laughs> you guys go up the bungle <laughs> to get it. <laughs> you have to go up the bungle bung, bung hole to get it. That's a good name for the episode, the bungle bung hole. Can we call it that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, on that note, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Fucking hell, that was scary. <laughs> Goodbye, children. Bye. Bye. Say bye, Stu. Goodbye, children. <laughs>